um, to use a rational argument about an irrational period of time, or if that makes sense. <coughs> um, I'd like to give two quick responses. The first response, you mentioned the pens. And I was using the pen to simplify the quantum mechanics. Because the sum total of saying that we are in between an infinite chain of events is to say that the gap between two points in an infinite chain is infinite. And that's why I said no. That's why I'm distilling, and that's why I'm not trying to rationalize something that's very complicated. I'm taking the, their conclusion and saying your conclusion from that is wrong. So their conclusion, if we are going to be within an infinite chain, the two points in an infinite chain are separated by infinite time, and I've shown you it's not separated by infinite time because I've shown you point one, point two. So we're not in an infinite chain, that's all. The thing about M theory is I explain ration. I said that we must have reality. There's no reality to M theory. We must have sensation. There's no sensation to M theory. There's information. What information do you have about multiple universes? You might as well just be watching Star Trek. And there's Klingons that are blue and there's Klingons that are green and they're in different dimensions and somehow they cross over. But the green Klingons, they beat the blue Klingons. No. no. I'm not, I'm not okay. I'm, I'm, not that I'm, I'm, very I'm very glad because I, I would be embarrassed for you if you were defending M theory. M theory doesn't make any sense. I mean, I'm not speaking as, as an atheist nor as a believer. I'm actually agnostic, which I like to think, which gets overlooked quite a lot. It's not just mean, it doesn't just mean sitting on the fence. I think it's a separate conversation. But um, I just meant applying the logic, so going back, say where you have things that depend on other things. Um, I think that's fine for the tangible universe that we experience now. But then I think as you go further back, I don't think we can apply that same logic, even though it's rational to do that. And I'd probably agree that it is rational to believe in a creator. But I don't necessarily think that makes it correct. That makes any sense. You know what, as long as what we're discussing here today is something we agree on, belief in a creator is rational, which you agree with, then I wonder why you call yourself an agnostic. But maybe we'll discuss it afterwards. Okay, yeah, sure. um, any further questions? Uh, right in the corner. No, first one, first one. Me? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I'd like to address the issue of infinite regression. Um, yeah, pi, if you take it in theory, it can go on for infinity, but there's another number in mathematics called uh, the imaginary number, root minus one. But it doesn't exist in reality. The point is, uh, many mathematical constructs which help you explain the unexplainable. If you don't have those things, you can't explain your theories. So, so, <coughs> so root minus one is one of them, pi is another one. But you ask Michelin tires when they make a tire, do they calculate pi to the nth degree or to, or to infinity? It's to a finite number, and it's a circle. The tire is near enough a circle. The point is, the things that happen in theory but they do not happen in reality. And everything in the universe, um, from one point to another point, and from one reaction to another reaction, is finite. If every step is finite, and you have to wait another finite time for another finite thing to happen for another finite time, and if you want to take this to the infinite regression argument of uh, um, a Big Bang, Big Crunch, and we just might be in one of the slices of the Big Bang, Big Crunch, then uh, it doesn't work, because how long does one reaction wait for another reaction? How, do, how long does that reaction wait for the other reaction? How long does a big bang wait for the big, big crunch? And how long does that big uh, crunch wait for the big bang? It waits for infinity. <coughs> but I exist. I happened. The monitor in front of me exists. You exist. The podium exists. Therefore, there was a finite amount of time that passed. If a finite amount of time passed, then infinity could not have happened, and we cannot be in an infinite regression. So therefore, we cannot be at the end of uh, infinity, we cannot be at the middle of infinity, and we cannot be at the beginning of infinity, because at every point, it is finite. Thank you very much for your presentation. Any further questions? Uh, we'll give the special guest appearance another chance. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, one question. Um, Hassan, you mentioned that you're using rational thinking, as the title suggests, and Richard was suggesting that he uses science. Why can't we use science? Why do we have to use rational thinking? Why can't we use science? Um, we're having a discussion about ration. Ration, as I... Rationality. Okay, rationality, rational thinking. 
we are having this discussion and I said that was the basis of thinking. So if this is how you think, there are other ways of thinking built upon rational thinking. Science is built upon rational thinking because there's got to be, even in science, there's got to be a reality that you sense and you have information about. Otherwise, when you go to do your science experiment, what the hell is an experiment? What is, a, what is science? Where am I? Who am I? What's who? <laughs> so, there, you will be rational when you do science. But science is a branch of thinking that has a limitation, and the limitation is it can only deal with things that are tangible and it can remove them from its current conditions so it can test and then it can repeat that test because you've got to be able to reproduce your conditions for science um, that's not what we're talking about here we're asking can you make inference can you make deduction can you look at something and come to a conclusion something made it that's not science science isn't used for that science is used for does this washing machine work <coughs> and how good does it work and how long can I make it work it doesn't tell you who made the washing machine and that's what we need to look at and that's rational and that's why I gave the example of the dead body that's why I can give you many examples something that was made had somebody make it that's rational something that needs other things didn't bring itself into existence that thing regardless of what that thing is made it whether you like it or not, whether you like the rules he's going to set on you. So you might not like the traffic warden, but you've got a ticket. You might not like the warden of your jail, but you're stuck in jail. You might not like him, but he's there. Deal with it. Um, we're going to take our final concluding question, and we're going to um, sum up with both speakers giving a final um, conclusion of the presentations. Um, maybe the last two questions. So. The, I think the girl is celebrating Christmas early. <laughs> <laughs> um, the question is, like, just because the Earth began existing, doesn't necessarily mean that beingness began existing at that point. And I don't quite understand how you're managing to draw one from the other. It's implying that the Earth is the center of absolutely everything that has ever existed. And it seems quite a narrow view to, have, to take um, also limiting concept of God or a creator. Um, okay, forgive me if I'm wrong here, but I hope I didn't make it sound as if I'm only talking about Earth. I'm talking about the universe. Everything that exists, and that's not just the Earth. Everything that exists, which is the sum totality in the universe, had a beginning. And I don't think that's a narrow view. You can't get much wider than the universe. <laughs> Um, Professor, would you like to make any? No, 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 pass on that. Any other questions? Um, <laughs> if it's, uh, it's too Hassan here, if it's so rational to believe in a creator, then why do so many people not believe in it or argue against it? If it is that rational to believe in a creator? Um, I'm going to give two answers. The first answer does not apply to Richard. Right? The first answer is insincerity. The first answer is they just don't want it. I'm going to believe in a God. Okay, this God is going to tell me how to live, how to dress, who to have sex with, is what Richard said. And you know what? There's, there are people on this planet who are cold, bitter, hard-hearted people. And they do not want to be told what to do. They'll take away their freedom. And they don't like it. They want to be free. They want to be free to insult you. They want to be free to impose their will on you. They want to be free to do what they want. Me, me, me. Individualism. And you know what? That is a curse on this earth. It's a curse on this earth to have people who are that selfish. And those people, when you meet them and you discuss with them, they are insincere. And I hope we've not got anyone like that here today. And there's others who maybe just need time and then I would say in that category perhaps it would be Richard maybe you just need time to sink in to say if that is rational maybe I should apply it here I'm applying it everywhere else why am I leaving it out here that would be insincere I should not be insincere I should accept that this is rational that's what I would say all I can say I think they just need time and maybe we haven't done our job 
maybe we haven't spread these ideas strongly enough. Maybe we should be going out there and talking to people about what we believe is rational. And hopefully that will change, change the conditions in which we debate under our university. Um, that's going to be our final concluding um, comment. Um, now is the time come up basically where we're going to sum up the whole presentation by both speakers. And my last speaker, Norman, to quickly, maybe in um, five minutes to sum up, okay, or maybe in a bit um, quicker than that. <laughs> Maybe, okay, I mean, I'm, I'm grateful to have something to say, but I just need time. But at my age, that's not terribly reassuring. So, um, I began by saying um, this evening that um, the, the issues that we're talking about this evening are ones about which people have very strong feelings, and I think that's been brought up tonight. And it's been a, a very heated debate, and I think that's good. If we just treated this as a trivial debate, I think that would be that would be wrong. Uh, uh, the, the organizers of the debate um, um, emphasized the importance of responding to one another with respect uh, and responding to um, those with whom you disagree with respect for me means listening to their arguments <coughs> trying to answer them and, <coughs> and that's what we've been doing I think and I hope we've been trying to do that uh, <coughs> in good faith and the fact that it, as I say the fact that it has sometimes been heated is fine that's what you'd expect uh, in a debate about really important questions. There are really just two things that I want to say in conclusion. One, which has run right through this discussion, uh, and this is just to repeat something that I've been saying already, is that there still seems to me to be a contradiction, if I may say so, at the heart of what Hassan is saying. Every time he says, we can't think about what lies outside this reality, I absolutely agree. We can only make sense of the world of our own experience, we can only make sense of the universe in which we live. And what bothers me is that, having said that, he, he then seems to keep wanting to have it both ways and to say, nevertheless, we can and should rationally make, make, make claims about what does lie outside this reality, namely that it's the product of a creator. Now, he's quite, uh, quite properly... Um, insisted that he doesn't want to say it, it's not the business of this debate this evening to say more about the nature of that creator but the very fact of using the word creator if it's a meaningful term at all makes certain kinds of positive claim about something that lies outside the reality of our experience to talk about the, the, the notion of a creator at the very least implies some notion of intention <coughs> implies some notion of understanding and intelligence and it implies the idea of an entity outside our reality that has those qualities. So my basic problem with him is that he seems to want to have it both ways but he will have the last word and so he will explain to you why, why he can do so. The other thing that I wanted to just very quickly pick up because in a way it's a pity that we've got so hung up on these arguments about finite and infinite but I did just want to say a very quick word about the question that was raised by a person who was up in the far corner and is now gone, but the question about the relationship between uh, religion and morality, because as Hassan quite rightly said, though that's not our central topic tonight, you know, one of the reasons why people, uh, apart from the arguments that have been considered this evening, one of the reasons why people think it very, very think it rational to believe in the existence of a divine creator is that they see that as the only way to explain our moral values and the force of our moral values. And um, Hassan said something very briefly about that, and I do just want to say a very quick word about that, because the dilemma that Hassan presented to you there was either you think that <coughs> morality is simply in the eye of the beholder or in the eye of the believer, that it's completely subjective and that therefore whatever you think is right just is right, or <coughs> morality has some basis uh, of an objective kind, in which case it must be grounded in the will of a divine being. I, I want to say that we don't have to accept either of those positions. I'm not a subjectivist about moral values. Moral values matter. Uh, certain things are right or wrong. Um, even if people don't recognize that that's the case, morality has some, has some objective basis. But I don't think it helps to ground it in the idea of a divine legislator. Uh, and indeed, the idea that the only reason that we, we act well, that we act as we ought to, beca is because we're obeying some kind of authority, seems to me to debase the idea of moral values. The reason why moral values matter, 
and why they're important <laughs> and why they're objective <laughs> is because of the nature of human beings, because of the fact that we live in a human world where we have to live with one another and cooperate with one another and it's deeply built into our nature of you as human beings that we need